Ernst and Justice Prisco for my first murder in years without a leader. Many a decent gambler would have shot himself for less. Frank Presco due to grave exception to my hat. Oh, what's he staring at now? Fly buttons undone? No, he can't see them. Wig? Well, the wig is a bit battered. I got it second hand from an ex-Chief Justice of Tonga in 1932. Oh, do listen to the evidence, Presco. Stop staring at me. And finally, members of the jury, counsel for the defense in this case has chosen to challenge the police evidence, as he is entitled to do. But you are entitled to form your own opinion of that evidence quite independently of the views of learned counsel, however long he may have been practicing at the bar. The nudge, nudge, wink, wink summing up. Why don't you just tell him Rumpel's past it? We all enjoy Mr. Rumpel's speeches. We always find his little jokes most amusing. But you and I have a more serious duty to perform. Yes, and I'm only here to provide the light relief. Bring on the dancing Rumpel. So will you please go now and consider your verdict. The only question for you is whether Melvin Glassworth is guilty as charged. Mr. Jerry Bailey. I swear that I will conduct the jury to some private place. Please, Your Honor. Really Consider the feelings of an old man. Give it more than five minutes. The outstanding. The Honorable Mr. Justice Featherston. You have reached the pinnacle of your profession. At last, your dedication to talking to all the right people around the Sheridan Club, your years spent losing at golf to senior judges, have paid off. Arise, Guthrie Featherston J. Barristers older than you will bow before you and ask if your lordship pleases. My lord, you have fulfilled your destiny. Mr. Rumpel, for the fifth time of asking, I am not going to adjourn this case. So far as I can see, the defense has had all the time in the world. Your Lordship must know how difficult it can be to trace a solicitor if your Lordship remembers his own days at the bar. Neither your so-called eloquence nor your alleged jokes will make me change my mind. And may I remind your lordship that for many years past, my client's business life has been in the hands of the elusive Mr. Perryvale Blythe. Your client's business life, such as it was, was in his own hands, Mr. Rumpel. And it's time he faced up to his responsibilities. This case will proceed without any further delay. This is my final decision. If your lordship pleases. <laughs> you did your best, sir. Good old miser. He always says that when I fail dismally. What did I tell Mrs. Tripp? There's not a man sitting as a judge in the family division that could bear to see a woman treated in this way. Of course, I didn't know who we'd get then, did I? I'm given to believe that Mrs. Justice Appleby is the only genuine male chauvinist pig in the building. They tell me when she goes out on circuit, when she tries murders, she puts on a thin line of lipstick before summing up to the jury. It's the nearest her ladyship ever gets to the art of seduction. Oh, a frosty look at us. Thrip versus Thrip. And a frosty look at George. The score is love all. That must be Thrip. I must say, we could have hoped for something about twice the size. He's hardly perfect casting for the part of Bluebeard. Yes, Mr. Rumpo. Ready for the off. If your ladyship pleases. Mr. Rumpo, I don't please. These long lists of grievances and complaints don't please me in the least. Is there no chance of the parties here seeing sense and coming to a reasonable compromise? Oh, no chance whatever. This is a fight to the end, my lady. 
as my learned friend will assure you. Dinner, George. Hmm? Uh, yes, it is indeed a fight, my lady, due to last at least six days. Oh, very well. Tell me about it, Mr. Rumpo. <coughs> This is probably one of the strangest cases this court may ever have heard. The story of a bluebeard who kept his wife a virtual prisoner in their flat in Muswell Hill, denied her the simple comforts of biscuits and bath water, denied her the comforts of his conversation, but communicated with her only by means of brusque, bitter and insulting little notes. Mr. Rumpo. Uh, yes, my lady. May I remind you of something? Certainly, my lady. The jury box is empty. This is a trial by judge alone. I don't require to be swayed by your oratory, which no doubt is enormously effective in criminal cases. Just give me the relevant dates, will you? Yes, my lady. <laughs> 